From the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. Government today received 33,600 doses of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine through the COVAX facility. As he received the shots, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis made a plea to Bahamians to continue following health protocols as health officials remain concerned about a recent spike in cases. Dr. Minnis said, quote, it is also important to avoid large gatherings. Easter weekend is traditionally a time of family gatherings and fellowship, including beach picnics. But we are still in the midst of a pandemic. These are not normal times. With this tranche of vaccines to date, the country has gotten 53,600 vaccinations. Police found $3.1 million worth of suspected cocaine during a drug bust in Eleuthera yesterday. Assistant Commissioner of Police Solomon Cash told reporters he believed the drugs are the products of a transitional crime, saying it was a trans shipment outside of the jurisdiction into the Bahamas. He said that on Sunday, police received intelligence concerning an aircraft inbound to the country with suspected cocaine on board. Local law enforcement assisted by the U.S. Coast Guard, U.S. Customs and Border Protection, and the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration launched a comprehensive investigation. Shortly after 12 noon yesterday, this aircraft landed at the Governor's Harbor Eleuthera airstrip as a result of international partners along with local law enforcement officers. Surveillance exercises were commenced of the aircraft and the airstrip. Officials then observed two individuals leaving the aircraft. Assistant Commissioner Cash said he was uncertain about their nationalities, but police last night said the suspects were aged 28 and 37. Reimposing COVID-19 restrictions to combat a third wave of infections was yesterday branded a terrifying proposition for Bahamian businesses already struggling with pandemic-inflicted devastation. Ben Albury, Bahamas Bus and Trucks General Manager, told the Tribune that reverting back to lockdowns and other measures employed in 2020 would destroy the progress this nation has made to date in reviving its vital tourism industry. Speaking after public health officials yesterday voiced concerns that rising infections suggest the Bahamas is on the brink of suffering a COVID-19 third wave. Mr. Aubrey urged the government to only reimpose restrictions under the most extreme circumstances, given that many businesses are very close to failing due to the events of the past 12 months. COVID-19 vaccinations were set to officially begin on Eleuthera today, with community officials expecting a good turnout and smooth process. This marks the first family island to administer the Oxford AstraZeneca doses since the country received the shots earlier this month. It is not clear how many doses have been sent to the island. However, yesterday, the Tribune spoke to several community officials to get an update on the preparation efforts. Designated Administrator for Spanish Wells, Harbor Island, and North Eleuthera said vaccination centers have already been identified identified for residents in those respective communities. However, he added they will not be rolled out simultaneously. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, Governor Andrew Cuomo announced last July that New York would spend $100 million in federal coronavirus relief to help cash-strapped tenants pay months of back rent and avert evictions. By the end of October, the state had doled out only about $40 million, reaching 15,000 of nearly 100,000 people looking for help. More than 57,000 applicants were denied because of criteria set by lawmakers that many said was difficult to meet. New York's experience played out nationwide, with states failing to spend spend tens of millions of federal dollars aimed at helping renters avoid eviction. Burdensome requirements, poorly administered programs, and landlords refusing to cooperate meant tens of thousands of tenants never got that assistance. Experts boarded the massive container ship Tuesday that had blocked Egypt's vital Suez Canal and disrupted global trade for nearly a week, seeking answers to a single question that could have billions of dollars in legal repercussions. What went wrong? As convoys of ships again began traveling through the artery linking the Mediterranean and Red Seas, a canal service provider said more than 300 vessels, carrying everything from crude oil to cattle, were still waiting for their turn in a process that will likely take days. Egyptian government officials insurers, shippers, and others similarly waited for more details about what caused the skyscraper-sized ever given to become wedged across the canal on March 23rd.
The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A strengthening high-pressure ridge continues to promote moderate to locally strong winds across the Bahamas through tonight. Beachgoers should continue to exercise caution along East Coast beaches due to the risk of rip currents. In the Northwest Bahamas, it'll be variably cloudy, warm, and breezy, with a few light passing showers possible through tonight. Small craft caution is in effect. Winds east to southeast at 15 to 20 knots. Seas 4 to 6 feet over the ocean. In the central and southeast Bahamas that'll be partly to mostly sunny, warm, and very breezy, with a few light passing showers possible through tonight. Small craft advisory is in effect. Winds easterly at 15 to 25 knots, seas 5 to 8 feet over the ocean. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 86 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 70. The sun will set this afternoon at 724 and will rise tomorrow morning at 703. That's news break. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper now on the streets or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.